Uh, well, I had a little break recently um, from many big projects as I've just had my first baby, um, which actually is a whole different project <laughs> and a full time job in itself. Um, but throughout the second half of last year and earlier into this year, I had been working on a commission with Manchester Histories, um, exploring the River Irk and the surrounding North Manchester community there. Um, it was called the People's River Project, and it involved working with people who lived and worked along the River Irk here in Manchester. It was inspired by Frederick Engels um, and the writings that he did of the Irk in his seminal text, The Conditions of the Working Class in England. I was lucky enough to work with a whole host of local groups and businesses for this project um, that all kind of like spanned across the IRC. Um, it ranged from Friends of Angel Meadows to HMG Paints, 93 Wellbeing Centre, Collyhurst Big Local um, and an existing group I often work with called the Many Hands Craft Collective. Um, we were working within the limitations of the pandemic, but lucky enough, uh, I was able to also work with a couple of the groups to go on physically kind of social distant photo walks um, or photo waddles, as I was doing uh, towards the end of the project. I was heavily pregnant at that point. Um, but collectively, we explored the local area. We shared stories about hidden histories of the River Irk and its surrounding neighbourhoods, and we created photographs, text and poetry and cyanotypes all of which aim to reflect people's views on the great kind of ever-changing area landscape. Um, there were so many themes that emerged from the process actually, um, from personal journeys and defining community and identity to the importance of nature uh, and frictions and aspirations about regeneration and development of the area. I tend to work mostly in photography and video um, as this was my first degree. Um, but for me, I do it because it's really accessible art form for other people to engage in. I'm really interested in also the very tactile nature of photography. I think people think of it as a kind of digital thing now, but I'm really interested in working with existing imagery and archives as this kind of starting point for discussion. And also working with alternative processes in analog and cameraless photography. I really like to push the boundaries of what we mean by photography um, and I think we can be really playful and performative with it um, if we want to and actually sometimes the work I produce might end up a sculpture or a textiles piece or a large graphic but the process of engagement has always started from that idea of working with photography and people and the stories that come through that. My biggest inspiration um, is probably inspirations is probably the closest to me, to be honest. So particularly the women in my life, um, friends and family, who have always shown me that you can achieve your ambitions and goals and to believe in yourself every step of the way. So thank you. You know who you are, ladies. I would have to say that my first proper residency, which was on an allotment site called Bradley Folds, will always stand out for me, simply because it was my first self-initiated project. And actually I never would have been able to do it if it hadn't been for the support and I guess willingness of the allotment group that I approached. They didn't know me at all when I kind of had approached them. And they'd never really been asked to have anyone who wasn't strictly allotment focused on site with them before. And it was this residency for me that cemented the way I wanted to work on future projects. It was also a real treat um, to be given a mountain of fresh produce to cook with, which we then hosted barbecues with and get togethers that kind of acted as part of the engagement process, but also as a thank you for the people that I worked with. And I would say photography really does um, bring people together, but so does food. Um, so I have, this one which is kind of with my academic research head on uh, which is photography of protest and community so it explores the kind of radical photography collectives that were around in the 1970s in the uk and it's produced by dr noni stacy um, it's a really good read if this is of interest to you um, and secondly um also very interesting but a uh, different age range this is a little book that I'm reading with my six month old son at the moment, which is called A for Activism, which is a great little gift that I've got off one of my friends. Um, 
it's just got the alphabet of things to consider about inclusivity um, and activism and fighting for your rights in life, um, which I hope my son can learn from. Um, there's loads to choose from. I'll read one page. Uh, here we go. I'll do I. So I is for Indigenous and immigrant. Together we stand tall. Our histories are relevant. An injury to one is an injury to all. There you go. That's by Inosanto Nagara. If we were talking about the art world, then I'd love to spend the day with artist Agnes Deans. Um, she's one of the most interesting and for me pioneering artists, exploring kind of ecological concerns, but with solution focused large scale installations. If we're talking about spending the day with anyone from the world in general, though, then it's got to be David Attenborough. <laughs> He's just got the amount of world that he has seen. I, I would just love to hear of his adventures. When I was really little, I actually wanted to be a musician. Um, I loved music. I played in different instruments. Um, I loved listening to my parents' music that they had lying around in the spare room. Um, but I was never really good enough at it, if I'm honest. And I certainly wasn't disciplined enough uh, to, to practice the, the amount that you needed to, to be a professional musician. Um, I did always at the same time, love being in the art room at high school. And I would happily play for hours on my own with arts and craft stuff when I was a much younger kid as well. But I guess I'd never really thought of um, it as a career option until I saw my older sister start to work in the sector. And she was a really big inspiration for me because I could actually see her making a name for herself as a curator. And it also opened up this idea that you can be more than one thing in the art. So, you know, you can be more of a creative practitioner in different ways. So whether that's an artist, a curator or a facilitator uh, or all three, um, which I still work across myself today. <laughs> 